In this video, I'll be offering an overview about educational research, the basic concepts. So if you are starting on your research journey and you're worried that educational research is quite complex and if you fear that it will be ending up to be a focus on numbers and formulae, then rest assured it's not. And you're not in this alone. Realistically speaking, we all do research every day. And one of the most interesting and relevant comparisons or analogies is us shopping online. So educational research is as simple as shopping online with the different decisions that we take into consideration. Let's look at it. First off, if I'm going to buy something on Amazon, let's say, or Etsy or anywhere else, usually we all end up checking customer reviews or the majority of us who want to make informed decisions, we check customer reviews, we check the stars and we check, check the narratives also. So let's say I am looking for a uh, microphone for recording online uh, videos and I check a particular uh, product that has 1,611 reviews and it star, the number of stars is four and a half. I'm going to feel more comfortable about the decision that I'm going to take with regards to that product because the reviews are quite strong. However, if the same, if another product had only 121 reviews and it's the same stars, I would tend to believe in it quite less. I wouldn't be as comfortable. And if the reviews are only 13, even if it is three and a half, or even if it ends up being five, I'm not gonna trust those 13. Now the question is, do I usually jump to the narrative or to the stars? Most of the time our decisions start with the stars, which is parallel to quantitative research methods. That's what quantitative research methods is. It's giving you the data, numerical, with solid evidence for you to make an informed decision. Now, once I know that a particular product is high on the star level, I might actually go to the qualitative narrative aspect. I have them here blurred for confidentiality and whatnot uh, and copyright issues. So it is just an idea about the narrative. Now you notice over here that there is no notion of verified purchase. So if I find this narrative with no verified purpose, uh, purchase, which tells me that this is written by somebody who actually bought the product, I might not trust it much. But if there is this verified purchase, I'm gonna trust it a bit more because I'm more confident that uh, the reviewer had actually bought the product and mind you, the information I get from this narrative is more nuanced than the stars. The stars gives me the, uh, or the stars give me the solid evidence with regards to the majority of people. What did they consider to be good or bad? Is it good? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Going to the narrative, now I get some nuances about checking whether this is something of relevance to me or not. But also, more importantly, if I have this verified purchase review, I'm definitely going to get way more from a narrative that gives more in-depth. And that's what qualitative research provides me with. Qualitative research provides me with perceptions, opin opinions, and in-depth understanding that allows me to feel whether this applies to my context or not. So, the stars is the quantitative, the mass numbers are the quantitative, the nuances are the qualitative. Now, mind you, even within qualitative, I can get more value from longer or more uh, detailed feedback, which tend to be the interviews and whatnot. And also, if I have some images, that's even further of information. And that's where later on, when we talk about qualitative research, I will get more nuanced and more in-depth understanding if I use, let's say, 
interviews, observations, and documents or exemplars from the participants. So in short, this is what it's all about. It's something that we do on an everyday basis. However, as the code says, it is formalized curiosity and it is poking and prying with a purpose. So there is a formalized process for a purpose. And this is a statement or a code that was offered by Zora Neely Hurston, who's an American author, anthropologist, and filmmaker. You can tell she's not an academic, but still she made use of research for the purpose of her work. And in her opinion, and I fully agree, it's formalized curiosity while trying to reach a particular purpose. So that in mind, research defined. There are multiple definitions on the web that you can find in books and whatnot. However, one of the most prominent is Cresswell in research, educational research. Uh, the focus is research is a process of steps used to collect and analyze information to increase our understanding of a topic or issue with a step-by-step -step systematic way to finding the solution for a problem. Another one is the creative systematic activity undertaken in order to explore and understand a particular culture, society, and use this knowledge for new applications. This is by the OECD. In general, if you go and search the net and different resources, there are two keywords that will always show up when it comes to research. It is investigation, and it is systematic. So there is a systematic process to understanding and getting the outcome of research to be beneficial for us in our work. So what is the systematic process? The next few slides will briefly present what this means. And this will be uh, what it all starts with. We need to identify the research problem. That research problem is always of relevance or interest to us as researchers or to our context within the community or society we're working with. We need to specify the problem of interest. We need to justify it because it's meaningless if it is just a problem of interest to me. It's, it is worth the while, but when I'm doing educational research, I need to justify it, and I need to present the need for my audience. So this is the first step. The second step is reviewing the literature. We've, most of us, whether we have worked on empirical and uh, educational research or not, we've worked on review of the literature. All of those essays that we conducted or wrote in different courses, where we talk about a particular topic and find what the literature says about it, those are one form of review of the literature. In reviewing the literature, we lo locate the resources. Usually for academics, we have to make use of books, journals, electronic resources. Sometimes we take advantage of newspapers uh, or, uh, or newspaper items that highlight particular topics based on the current uh, current uh, state of affairs, but most of the time we work with academic resources. We select the resources that are of relevance to our topic, and finally we summarize them into a literature review as we tell the story of what is our interest, why is it of relevance, and why is it important for me to understand and study it. After this, we specify the purpose. The purpose is usually identifying a statement, the research question, and potentially the hypotheses or the central phenomenon I'm going to study. Once I have those research purposes and questions aligned, I start working on deciding on the methodology in order to collect the data and to identify the sources of data I'm going to be, make use of. To collect the data, I need to identify what's the method I'm going to use, select the individuals I'm going to target, who will best provide me with information, design collection instruments, outline my procedures, 
definitely obtain permissions when I'm talking about collecting data from human individuals and then go out there and gather the information. Once I have that data, I need to analyze, interpret and make sense of what's happening. And usually, unfortunately, this is the phase that everybody fears, whether it is quantitative or qualitative, but realistically speaking, it's not uh, quite frightening when we break it down into smaller pieces and work on it. Analyzing and interpreting data, we break it down. We represent the data with either graphs or figures or images or plot lines, and we explain it in a way that the audience will be able to understand. And once I have that and I evaluate my data and write my report, I publish it or disseminate it in different formats. It can be in a journal article, it can be in a conference presentation, or it can be in a social media post or reel. And then this brings me back to the final loop where I start all over again because whatever I'm finding will always help me identify new research problems or questions. Bottom line, it's not rocket science. All of us can do it because all of us are really doing research on a daily basis in all of uh, our daily activities. And for that, we will be taking other videos for or other presentations during which I will be presenting the different phases and different in-depth understandings. If you have any questions, feel free to send them my way. And if you have particular uh, interests in topics that you'd like me to cover, feel free to share with us.